All right, number four. You are estimating how many bricks you will need to order for a 48 inch wide double wythe wall that is 32 inches tall. Uh, I have wall in there probably too many times. Uh, for part of a patio design. The bricks are sort of standard bricks and normal bricks. Um, how many bricks would you need in order to do this? So, okay. A uh, couple things to talk about here. One is uh, sort of s stacking bricks. If we look at a quick section of, of a portion of the bricks, uh, if I have, uh, let's say, you know, three bricks stacked on top of each other, and then I have another three bricks stacked on top of each other uh, next to them, uh, each one of these lines is considered a course, course of brick. Each one of these lines is considered a wythe of brick. Um, I've talked to people a bunch of times. Some people say width, some people say wythe. I prefer to say wythe just because it differentiates, differentiates it from the word width. Um, but uh, I actually, I think width is actually the technically correct term. So people will say it different ways, it doesn't really matter. But uh, that's, uh, the vertical line um, is, a, is a wythe, the uh, horizontal is a, is a coarse. Um, and every three bricks in a kind of standard, normal uh, run of bricks is eight inches. Uh, so when you stack them together with their mortar beds, that's an eight inch uh, uh, height. So we start thinking about this wall that we talked about. Uh, so, okay, here's our wall. And it's two wythes. And this is 32 tall, and this is 48 long. Uh, so what do we know about brick? Well, one of the things we know about brick, a, a typical brick, uh, is that that typical brick is eight inches by four inches. And the height is sort of the really odd, right? Because the height is like one third of the eight inches. So most people don't really worry about the height. They, they think of it in the groupings of three because it's just easier to do the calculations. Um, now remember, just like the CMU, that means that the eight is actually seven and a half, seven and five eighths, a couple of them, like there's a few, quite a range in there. Uh, bricks are more uh, malleable than, than CMU. Uh, so it'll be a little bit more of a range, but it'll be a similar thing. But in terms of nominal dimensions, it'll be uh, eight by four, four by eight. Uh, so that eight inches in that brick, I start looking at that 48 inch length of the wall. Uh, I can have every one of the bricks is eight. That means I have six bricks uh, in, that, uh, in that row um, for every, in that course, every, every uh, part of, uh, section of that wall, that, every course of that wall. And then now the question is, well, how many courses do I have? Well, if I have 32 inches tall and every eight inches is uh, three courses, so I can start dividing that into four groupings, uh, one, two, three, four groupings of eight inches. So I've got four groupings of three courses each. Therefore, that's 12, four times three is 12. So I have 12 times six, it's gonna be equal to 72. So uh, as I did when I was first writing this, I was like, okay, so the answer is A, 72, and then I realized, oh, I, I tricked myself. It's a double wythe wall, so I have to double it because I have the same number of bricks on the backside of the wall as well. So the actual answer here is B, 144. Um, so this is one of those things, you start seeing uh, a few simple dimensions, and suddenly it all starts piling together. Like one of the things you probably should have noticed if you didn't realize already is the stack of three bricks, eight inches, that's the same as a CMU. So same as the height of a CMU. So I can say if I have a backup wall of CMU with an air gap and then a veneer of brick, uh, I can say that every three bricks is one CMU. Every uh, three CMUs is going to be nine bricks, right? It's a, you can very easily sort of run these things back and forth. And that's really important because you also want to be able to uh, make sure that, you know, if I have a, a three bricks in a row um, and then I have a CMU back here uh, and I've got an air gap, I want to be able to put the, um, the, the ties, the ladder ties or some other kind of ties across. I want to know that those are always going to match up with each other so you're not having a sloped tie or something. Um, so the fact that these things are actually modular is really useful and helpful. Uh, and you start, once you start getting into just a few of those dimensions, they suddenly all start to kind of tie together and you start seeing how everything kind of fits together. 
And it's actually a very useful way of thinking about these things. Um, another little tricky thing that I threw in here was a square of bricks. Um, square is actually not used for bricks. That's used for roofing. So you'll often hear people who refer to a square of roofing. And what they're talking about there is a 10 by 10, 10 foot by 10 foot area of roofing. So if you have a, a, a shingle um, that uh, would be exposed, would be say one square foot exposed, then um, uh, you would, there would be a hundred square, like whatever it would take to get a hundred square feet of exposed finished uh, uh, asphalt brick, I mean asphalt uh, shingles um, or slate shingles or whatever. This is a way of talking about kind of um, ordering um, uh, roofing materials because they are so different in terms of how much they overlap and all that. What you really care about is what is the finish amount that I'm going to get. So a square you'll see show up, but not about brick. It'd be about roofing. Um, a couple of other things to mention here uh, that when you're tying these things together, uh, when you start thinking about how, how all this stuff kind of fits together, you'll notice that uh, the bricks are much more, they, they fit into the module, but they're also much more um, malleable. Uh, the, the bed, the thickness of the bed can be adjusted. Uh, you can have a thicker uh, mortar bed, you can have a thinner mortar bed. So you have a lot of ability at sort of uh, adjusting something to get it right. But the thing you'll definitely find is that this, this dimension, that eight inch dimension, um, will show up all over the place because uh, while getting the heights to sort of adjust easily, uh, you really don't want to get into situations where just sort of um, by accident of not really thinking it through, I have like a sliver of brick uh, next to a full brick. Um, like that starts looking really ugly. Uh, and so using the module in that direction becomes uh, really important. And then one last thing to mention, um, uh, when I did the 48 inches wide on the base of this wall and said, well, we just divide that by the uh, eight inches to get six, and that's, that's our number, we all know that most of the time this is gonna be a running bond. So a running bond is gonna be something where I've got a brick lined up, um, and then the next, the next one up or down would be a half a brick, and then this is on the half lap, right, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But with the 48 inches, uh, this half brick is going to be matched by one at the other end, and so it's still going to be the same number. It's still going to be six bricks across. I'm just cutting one of them in half and using the two halves on the ends. We do have a question here from uh, Rajane. She's asking, how do, you, uh, how do we run a course for a double wife? How are the ties? Uh, that's a really good question. It actually is kind of complicated um, uh, because it depends on what the wall is. Um, often, if you're just doing like a patio wall or something where there's not, uh, there's not a lot of loading on it and it's not acting as a retaining wall, you, know, you kind of don't really worry about it too much and maybe you have ties every once in a while just to sort of tie it together. Or every once in a while you do one brick because remember this is, they're four inches wide nominally and that two of them together is equal to an eight inch uh, length of a brick that you do a header going the opposite direction and it ties the two whites together. Um, that's how the old school folks did it. That's why uh, you would see those patterns like a, a common bond or a, a Flemish bond or something often has that the end of the brick shown. It's because they were tying more than one white together uh, as a way to uh, make the different whites uh, work bondedly together in a, in a very strong um, structural wall. Um, in, in something like an outdoor wall, you might do that a few times just to kind of tie everything together. Uh, that's probably better in an outdoor wall and like a patio wall than using a metal tie because those walls are going to get very wet. Uh, they're going to have uh, water coming from both sides and so they're going to get saturated a lot. And you're just asking for trouble of uh, um, corrosion and stuff on the, on the metal um, ties uh, in, in the wall from that standpoint. Kind of interestingly, just on that point, brick is, people think of brick as being kind of waterproof, but it's not at all. It actually is very, very, very porous. Uh, and so when you get a heavy rain, that rain will just soak right into the brick and go right all the way through it and then eventually breathe back out and evaporate back out to the outside. Um, this is the whole reason why you have cavity bricks, cavity walls most of the time, where these days we have a veneer, one single width of, of brick on the outside and then an inch or two of air gap and then a CMU backup or other brick or wood or you know, wood studs or metal studs or whatever the backup structural wall is. 
and the, that wyth of uh, that veneer, that front wyth of brick, is really just act, act, acting as kind of like a rain screen. It's just uh, allowing to sort of shed the water mostly. It absorbs quite a bit of the water. It evaporates uh, back away. Any of the water that does get through that brick falls down the backside of the, that front veneer of the brick, and then you have weep holes to allow it to get out. So that absorption of the brick is really pretty amazing and, and, and massive. So you don't want to do much unless it's a very well protected wall uh, with metal, uh, unless it really is important structurally. Um, so tying them together in uh, this situation, I'd probably use the headers um, going from one wife to the other. Uh, if it was more of a retaining wall where there's actually high soil on one side and not on the other, then I'm probably actually going to have rebar and I'm going to have holes in the brick and I'm going to have rebar going through it in order to give it more of a uh, capacity as a full structural wall. Um, probably if I was really being smart about it, if I was using it as a retaining wall, I would actually do a concrete retaining wall and then just do a, a facing of brick uh, on the outside because the concrete's so much easier to use with the rebar. Um, hope that answered the question. Yep, looks good. Looks like everybody got that one right too, so. Cool.